Roberts Bridge Codex is the earliest surviving organ music. And in this source of two folios, we have three different types of composition. The first is the estampi, which was a type of dance characterized by much repetition. And this repetition included endings for each of the sections. So an estampi may have four or five sections, and each of those will have an open ending, which means that it's sort of halfway through and can't end the section, and then you go back from the beginning of the section and repeat it, and it terminates with the closed ending, which is final. Each of the sections has the same open and closed endings. And it's very easy to forget where you are in this form, which may be why the 13th century theorist Johannes de Gocheo wrote that the estampi was a very good dance for young people because its structure was so complex that it kept their minds from lascivious thoughts. And certainly when you're playing either of the complete estampis in Robert's Bridge, if your mind wanders, you'll easily get lost. I want to demonstrate this structure with one of the two estampes we have. This one is entitled Retrouvé, meaning to find again. And that is the problem in interpreting this piece, is finding your way from each of the sections back into the open and closed endings. And I'm going to demonstrate this so that you get a sense of the roadmap. I'm using my edition of the Estampi Retrouvé, which is published by Wayne Leopold. There have been many others. In some, the editor completely writes everything out so you don't have to know the structure. All you have to do is play uh, the notes on the page. And there are about four or five page turns in that. But I opted to give you pretty much what's in the manuscript where the open and closed endings are only shown once and then each of the following sections just ends where you go back into those endings. So if you use my edition, you are a bit more in the mindset of the time, but you have to know what you're doing. Always a good thing for an organist. So this SMP starts off with a technique taken from vocal music called hocket, literally a hiccup where uh, notes go back and forth between different voice parts. And on the keyboard, that's just like an alternation. So just going back, very easy, but if you imagine this being sung, it would be a, a different voice part taking those, and it creates a sort of hiccup type effect. And you'll hear this at different points throughout the SMP. So as an example of how vocal music and vocal techniques were influencing instrumental music. The SMP is definitely an instrumental form. And probably these SMPs did not accompany a dance, but were rather stylized dance music intended for instrumental performance to entertain and edify through the way the estampi structure has been realized for the keyboard. So let's look at this a little bit more. Uh, this is the first punctus or section of estampi retrouvé, and I'm going to play right to the first ending.
Now that obviously can't be the end because there's sort of a feeling of anticipation. And then we have the open ending, which is written over, sort of variation on the French ouvert, it's old French, ouvert for the open ending. At that point, we need to go back to the beginning of the punctus. That's not final. As you'll hear, we ended and then the punctus started. So that creates a very nice Introduction to the repeat. Etc. And then we play into the end of that punctus, and instead of taking the open ending this time, we'll take the closed ending, which is labeled clo, C L O S, in the old French. So this is the end of the first punctus. And now the closed ending. And we could stop the piece there. I would not try to shorten the estampi by including all of the sections and taking out the repeat and the open ending. Because I think this is a very characteristic part of the form, this repetition, a sort of medieval minimalism. And it's important not to just play the first section closed ending, second section closed ending, third section closed ending, because the listener won't get a sense of the repetition. Each of the estampes in Robert's Bridge lasts about six minutes with all the repeats for all of the sections. And so you might decide that's a little bit more than you have to devote in your program, and you may decide you only want to do two sections, three or four sections. This one has five sections, and I'm going to show you now how we might go through the other sections to find our way again into the open and closed endings, which are the same for each section. And I used a four-foot principle because I thought that's a, a nice, clear sound for this. We know that SMPs were played on small organs, and we know this through a series of letters from the King of Aragon to the Duke of Burgundy soliciting the service of one of the Duke's organ players who is simply entitled Jean. And the King of Aragon has heard of this Jean and wants him to come to his court and to bring the book in which he has notated the estampides and other pieces that he plays on the checker or the small organs. Now, we're not sure what the checker was. It may have been a type of string keyboard instrument, like the clavichord or harpsichord, but definitely this repertoire works on small organs. And in order to take our modern listeners back to that time, I think this is an opportunity to use two foot stops and even maybe a one foot stop to give the impression of those very, very small organs that might have only had a two foot as the, the lowest pitch. Uh, you've all seen illuminations and depictions of portative organs, which would be played with one hand on a keyboard while the other hand pumps the bellows. This music would be appropriate for positive organs. These are small organs that would be played by both hands of the organist while another person has to pump the bellows. So in exploring the Fritz organ, I might try to use a two foot 
I'm not suggesting that you change registrations for each section of the SDMP, but I want to give you different ideas so that uh, depending on whatever organ you're playing, you, you seek out different ideas. I would tend to play all of the SMPs on one basic sound, although you might choose a similar sound for the repetition, just to give a little bit of variety, and it also helps you remember where you are in the estampi structure. So uh, to demonstrate that very quickly, let's say I use the four foot octave on the main keyboard, on the great here. Etc. through the open ending. I might go to the same stop but on a different keyboard, so it's voiced slightly differently. For the repeat and the closed ending. So that's an easy way not to be too disruptive, but to give a little bit more variety of tone color and to explore the instrument. Now let's move on to the second section of this SMP, which is the shortest. And there's a reason for that, because this SMP is rather unusual. As a matter of fact, it's unique in my experience in that each of the sections don't end at the same point where you would just go straight into the open ending. So normally each of them is gonna end with the same motive or the same type of preparation to go into the endings. But these in Estampi Retrouvé are all different links and they go back at different points before the endings. So you have to locate where the figuration would take you, where it appeared in the first section so that you can go back there to get to your endings. And I'll demonstrate this. I'm going to use the two-foot gimshorn on the Fritz organ. It's a very lovely, uh, rather fluty sound. And this might give you an idea as well of what you could use on your organ to bring this late medieval music to life. So as I mentioned, the second section is the shortest. That's where it ends. Now we've heard that before, that because it's in the first section, and that's our cue as to where to go back. And it's very early in the first section, so you're going to notice there's quite a bit of the first section before we get to the endings. Did you hear the hocket in this second section as well? So that is a technique that we find uh, spread out throughout these sections of Estampi Retrouvé. So what would happen with this is we would go back so that is where we pick up the first section to get to our open and closed endings. So you heard, there's a lot of the first punctus that's repeated in this. And that's the reason that the second punctus is so short. It really doesn't bring in a lot of new material, but anchors us back in that repetition. Now, the same thing would happen. You would finish the open ending. to the beginning of the second section. And then now you go back into the first section to get to your endings. The 
chances just to get to those endings. But now we take the closed ending. could stop there. We've done the second section all the way through the open ending and repeated it through the closed ending. Or we could go to the third or the fourth or the fifth section and each is going to proceed the same way. I'm going to choose now the fourth section because it's the longest of the individual sections and you'll notice it goes straight into the endings. It doesn't include any of the first section in getting to those endings and it very much features pocket and you'll also notice that there are a couple of written out mordants and I think this is evidence of the use of this very common little decoration and since it's written out in some places I add it occasionally in other places. This is a good gauge in early music for the types of ornaments that you might add. In the absence of any type of ornament table or written description of ornaments, at this early time in our instrument's history, but taking something that appears in another part of the piece and adding it as a little ornament, a little accent to some of the other notes. So that's my rationale for including small mordants variously throughout the SMP. So here is the fourth section of the SMP, and notice the hocket and the mordant. That's where it ends, and of course you'll recognize that it's the beginning of the open ending. So the fourth section of the SMP goes straight into the open and later into the closed ending. Open ending. At this point, we've done the open ending, so we would repeat the fourth punctus and go into the closed ending at the end of it. So starting it. And we would end it. And again, we could end the entire piece at that point. But there is a fifth section if you want a little bit more. So this is an introduction into the estampi form using a rather unique example of the genre, the estampi retrouvé from the Roberts Bridge Codex.